I don't know if it's just Jonathan. You know, he's got a different way about him, um, both from his power play meetings, uh, his demeanor, his personality. You know, I mentioned earlier, he reminds me a little bit of Jacob Pelche, where he's kind of always on, and he just creates a little different vibe around the room. He's got a way of, I think, getting to players like Jonathan. So he finds a way to make the power play light and enjoyable, but at the same time, he gets them to understand that it's maybe the biggest part of a game that they need to be ready on. And you mentioned a while back that, that you wanted Jonathan to shoot more. Is that, is that the message from, from Mark? Mark? No, not so much. I mean, he, he he's who he is. He's, he's always going to be the pass first guy. And um, when we have our conversations with him, of course, we're going to challenge him to shoot. Um, but if he, like last night, like that, that rebound chance off of Elias's one timer, like, he needs to shoot those ones, and he knows that. He needs to finish those. Um, but he's going to make his decisions based on the way he sees and reads the game. So we want to give him the opportunity to shoot, of course, but um, Jonathan's Jonathan, and that's what makes him a special player is he's got that pass-first option. It's just making the right decision at the right time when it comes to passing instead of shooting. You were asked about Huberdeau, and you talked actually about how Tanev is a guy who is studying players, knowing oh, yeah. if they're passing or not. For those of us, like, this may be so stupid, but I've obviously never studied film with NHL coaches. Yeah. Is that something that you guys are going through with every player before every game? Uh, no, not every game. Like there's there's nights like last night where you'll take uh, a few players. If, if there's an area that you want to show them or work on them with, you might have two or three clips. Um, whether it's asking their opinion on them or um, why did you make that read like you did. So no, it's not every day. I, I think there's vi there's a fine line with video. You can overcoach in a hurry at times where you want them to be able to be free a little bit with their decision making, but you can also steer them with one or two ideas. So that's another one of those extra things that, that Chris Tanev does? Uh, we, yeah, he does for sure. Like we, we send some things out on our app if you want to call it and you can tell who views them a lot and Chris is always one of them that does. Yeah. Do you, uh, with two uh, road games left, is it now game-like mentality? Is this now where you want them to be everything? I know uh, you're going to be in Vancouver for an extended period of time. You're going to kind of have these guys ready for game-like mentality now? And I would suggest it wasn't before. Yeah, no. I, I think early on in exhibition, you see them trying to find their way a little bit more so with how they're handling the puck and, and some of the reads that they're making. Um, now it's doing it at a higher pace and executing and finding some more of the grit in your game. So the hard areas of the game where maybe the first few games of exhibition, the guys aren't really into it yet, that side of the game. Now it's, it's getting there because they know the season's just around the corner. So our last two games, much like we saw in the second and third period last night, I thought we were a harder, more competitive group. Um, and we're going to need to see the same in Edmonton and then, of course, to finish in Vancouver. As a coaching staff at this point, do you have a pretty good feel for what your roster is going to look like, or do you still see some pretty pretty big competitions in these final two games? Um, I, I think we have a pretty good idea, but there's competition within the positions, I guess you can say. So um, whether it's certain guys on the power play or um, certain guys in a, if you want to call it a fourth-line role, like, who's going to fit it the best and who's going to get an opportunity to play on the 11th. A really different type of question, but, but the coaching standard has evolved a lot over the past 10 years, even from when you were a player, I imagine. Yeah. It's changed quite a bit, so how do you, how do you go about motivating 19, 22-year-olds in, in today's game? It's a good question, too. I, I, I think at the end of the day, the player has to make sure he's ready to play. And when you look at the very best players around the league, they're the ones that come to the rink every day with the right mindset to be their very best. So um, a lot of times it's not up to the coach to motivate the individual player. Sometimes the team needs it at times, but um, if you can get the players to understand how they have to prepare themselves and make sure they're ready each and every night they step on the ice, that's ultimately what you want because um, Every once in a while, a coach's message may work there, but when you play 82 games a year, um, you have to put a lot of that on them. And I feel like we have a lot of guys that understand that, and they'll do a good job with that. And, um, a night like last night, we need to change a little bit in how we worked, and I thought some of our older players were starting to become the better players by and leading by example. So that's what we're looking for. So that Hollywood trope of the sort of profanity laden speech is that it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen all that often. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a question about Doug last year. Yeah. How would you describe his fit, especially with the new offensive philosophy that's being put in place? Uh, I don't even know if it's the offensive side of it. I think he's comfortable with um, 
what he has to be as a defenseman. He's fit in well with Nikita last game. I thought he played well with Chris. Um, I think he understands who he is now and the type of game that he has to play. And when you do look at it from afar, he, he does remind you a little bit of the way Oliver plays in regards to his foot speed and the way he moves around the ice. So I, I think he's done an excellent job of coming in and just keeping his game relatively simple and focusing on moving the puck and being a steady guy that we can count on. And that's really what we need from him.